Yeah, yeah, what's going on, you guys? You're Devon Tour in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon raw tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon raw tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to record in Pro Tools for beginners. A very basic and general understanding of how to get yourself up and running recording in Pro Tools. Let's get right to it. Okay. So I'm going to assume that you have Pro Tools. First thing you do is you click Pro Tools and you decide to create a new session. This is the window that you're greeted with. So first thing you see is this window right here and you're thinking to yourself, what does this mean? What do I do? So of course, name that's self-explanatory, name your session. So let's call this session tutorial and that's it. Next thing we'll look on down, you see something that says local storage session, collaboration and cloud backup, and create template. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. Most of the time, I guarantee you're gonna be using local storage, which means one of your hard drives that you're using on your system, um, and then you have collaboration and cloud backup, which is basically Pro Tools has actual uh, cloud storage that you can use to save your sessions, your choice. Um, and then you have create from template. Uh, now, create from template, say for instance, you work and you know your workflow, and you know the amount of tracks you're gonna use and all of these things, you can literally save them as templates and Pro Tools will know, hey, you want me to use that template that we used before? And it'll create it right there for you. Now, I have templates at helpmedevon.info and you can go in the description right now and download one if you want, but you can use my templates and create your own from there. Nonetheless, just letting you know. Okay. Now, let's say first, we're just gonna use local storage. Our name of our session is gonna be tutorial. Our file type, highly recommend WAVE files. So I'm gonna leave it at WAVE. Uh, bit depth, let's use 24 bit because chances are that's what most of our audio interfaces are accustomed to, 24 bit, which is gonna give you uh, uh, the best uh, amount of, uh, when it comes to dynamic range in that, in, that, in that sense. And that means the difference between the quietest and the loudest sound. So basically you have more dynamic range, you have more detail in your music, just to let you know. Okay, then you'll see right here, you see sample rate. Uh, and I, I like to set my sample rate for 48 kilohertz. Uh, 44 is great, it's fine, but 48 is a little bit more information that it actually uh, grabs from your microphone and how it samples that audio. So long story short, it, it's a more accurate reading of whatever signal that comes into your computer. So I like to use 48. Now granted, you'll see 96, 88, and all of those things, but uh, when it comes to those types of things, you're gonna be putting more load on your CPU, and uh, you probably won't notice too much of a difference. So I like to stay in that place that, of an optimal place of 48 kilohertz. So 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, great place to start. Okay, cool. So now, last thing you'll go to is location. I go to location and I pick where I want the session to be saved and that's it. So let's say I want it to be saved right here on my master drive and now I press create. Okay, now I'm greeted by this window and I'm like, what do I do? What is happening? How do I go about this? So this is a blank session. Now granted, remember I told you if you're using templates, your template would have loaded, which you can get at helpmedevon.info also. When you come into here, of course, the first thing you're saying is, okay, I have an artist, he wants to record on a beat. Before you do this, and before you start to do anything else, I want you to make sure that your session is in an optimal stand uh, standpoint. What do I mean by this? I mean coming over to here at something called Setup Playback Engine, and I want you to set this buffer size to 128 or lower. 128 samples. Now, what is this buffer size? Why does this matter? What's going on? Long story short, when you set your buffer size to a lower number, the less latency your person or artist is gonna hear in their headphones. Meaning, when I sing or rap into the microphone, I'm gonna hear that audio simultaneously, excuse me, instantaneously, as opposed to higher samples. So if I put it to 512, I'm gonna hear a delay in the headphones as far as being the artist is concerned. So when you're recording, just wanna let you know, always try to record at maybe 128 or lower. If you could take 256, cool, but I like 128 and lower. That's me personally, okay? So I set that up and I set my buffer size to 128. That goes for any DAW, by the way. Okay, so now that my computer I know is optimal for recording, let's begin. First thing I'm gonna say is, where's the beat? The, produce, the artist is gonna say, I have the beat and you're gonna get the file. What I do is I go to File, Import, Audio. I go to the desktop, I see a beat, it's called Cartel, which sounds scary and dangerous, mean. I press Convert, and I press Done. Now wait, 
before I go any further, I want to have you have an understanding of the difference between convert and pressing add because I can remove this and I can press add and it'll come into the session too. What is the difference and what is the biggest mistake of your life that you're going to make by pressing add? Um, when you press add, all you're saying is, hey, Pro Tools, the file is on my desktop. Just read it from there. Don't do anything else. Just read it from the desktop uh, file. Anytime I open this session, go back to that same desktop on the and look for that file cartel. Why is this extremely dangerous? The reason why it's dangerous is because if you do that, now when you take the session and send it to someone else or just put it anywhere else, now it's going to be looking on that desktop for that beat file and it won't be there. See, all you did was provide a link to it instead of actually providing a file for it. So this is why I like to press convert. And the only reason I like to press convert is because it makes a copy of that file, takes it and puts it in the audio file folder where it will sit with the session forever. So you'll never lose it. So I like to take it so it makes copies of the file. So sometimes this will be copy. Right now for us is convert because it's a different uh, format uh, from what the session is. Press convert or copy. Don't press add. That's me personally. If you want to do that dangerous walk uh, on that plank, by all means, go ahead. So I press convert and I press done. I don't touch anything else. Convert, done. This window will pop up. All this is asking you is, hey, is this the correct folder that you want us to put this copy of this file in? Yes. And this is pointing to the audio files folder that's accompanied, accompanied by the actual session. So do not press desktop. Do not put this anywhere else. You will mess this up. Do not change this place. You see this place where it is? Tutorial audio files, that's where it belongs. So you make sure it stays there. I'm telling you this because I know people that mess this up all the time. This is a beginner's mistake. Okay, open. Right now it's converting the audio into 24 bit uh, wave 48 kilohertz that our session is. So it's all optimal. Okay, you see this? You see new track or clip list. All the, the differences between these two things is if you were to select clip list, it's gonna put it in the Regents file folder or uh, window. And basically it's gonna, you're gonna have to drag it over to the actual track. So this is only if you say, hey, I don't want it to be in my uh, edit window as far as in the timeline of audio, but just put it right there in my storage bin so I can see it. I'll show you both. So let's say for instance, I say clip list. I press okay. And you see that thing that says clips right here? It's right there, but it's not in the session. And it's just an option if you don't want to see it yet, but you just want to have it stored there. But if you click new track, what will happen is it will literally just create a new track, boom, just like that. It's very simple and that's basically what happens. Okay, so now our track is in and we're saying, okay, cool. Now, uh, the next thing that I'm gonna highly recommend, this is gonna be a little bit of a bonus is, a lot of you will be recording on two tracks and the two tracks are limit, limited and mastered and they're very loud. You're gonna have to turn this down uh, in order to record because it'll be too loud for a regular vocal to be because some producers send it to you. What you can do is you can do something and this is a little bit of an advanced trick. You can skip this if you want. I'm gonna turn it down from the region and this is clip gaining. I'm going to clip gain this. I'm gonna turn this down to about right there. Awesome. Now this beat is lower in volume so that when I bring my vocal in and start recording, it won't be so loud because this is what's gonna happen. Now granted, a lot of you can do this from the fader and I'm gonna show you this right now. So this is known as your edit window. And the reason why it's known as your edit window is because you can come over here and edit things. I can chop this off and chop this off and edit and make all kinds of snips and things of that nature. There is a second window. If you click window and press mix, that this is your mix window. And you'll notice this has something that says inserts, sends. This is where you put your plugins and things of that nature. Mess with the pans, all kinds of stuff, which you can mess with in the uh, edit window. I'll show you later. So this is the mix window. This is the edit window. Now, if you wanna cipher between them really fast, you just hold command, press plus, boom. Just like this. Hope I didn't make you dizzy. Now, in doing that, I'll go back to the mix window and I'll show you this fader. You see this fader right here? I can move this fader up or down. Now, opposed to clip gaining, which we did in the beginning, uh, I could do it from here as well. But for now, just know you could do it from here, turn it down, or you could do it the way I showed you in the clip game. Just keep that in mind. Next thing I'm gonna show you is, how do I make my recording track? So how do you make the track 
that is ready for recording, your artist. You're going to go to track, new, and obviously a vocal is a mono audio signal. You have to decide between stereo and mono, which you see right here. I'm going to click mono because that is a mono signal. It's a singular signal or audio channel signal. I'm going to click audio track, mono. I don't bother this. I make sure this is at samples and I press create. Boom. I just created an audio track, basically used to track vocals. Now you think to yourself, okay, I'm ready to record. Here's what you're missing. Your computer has no idea what signal it should listen to as far as this audio one track. So this audio one track has no idea what it should be listening to audio wise. First and foremost, let's name this tracking. And the way I did that was I double clicked right there and named it tracking, or you can right click and press rename, just a heads up. Now, there's something called inputs and outputs, IO settings. What you need to do is you need to let this track know, hey, what signal from your audio interface do I listen to? What signal do I listen to? So for me, it would be uh, input one, which because of this tutorial, I'm just gonna put it for uh, bus one, but you would go to interface and choose the input of your mic signal. So if you look on your interface and you see that your input that you plugged your mic into was one, then it's gonna be one on there as well, okay? So for me, I'm just gonna say this number right here, which is not right for right now, don't pay attention to this bus thing, but you would go to interface. See this thing that's grayed out? You will go to interface. I don't have my interface plugged in right now, so that's why it's grayed out, but you will go to interface and go to the correct microphone input that corresponds with your track. Okay, next thing you would do is you would start to say, okay, I'm ready to record. So I would look for a spot on the beat. The artist tells me, yo, put me right here. Cool, you ready to record? The artist says, yes, what do I do? I record arm the tracking track, which is this button. Boom. Okay, that's flashing. We're not done. We're gonna come over to the right-hand side and you see this button right here? For you, this is what it's gonna look like when you first open Pro Tools, okay? You click this and you press record or you press space bar. So now that you have this flashing and this flashing, you're ready to record. Watch this. And here we go. Okay, so that was the artist. The artist was recording and we have signal coming into the track. And that's basically how we get the thing to start to record. Now, something I'm gonna show you just to make sure you don't make a mistake is this. I want you guys to always use quick punch mode. Why do I want you guys to use quick punch mode? And the way I did it was I right click on the record button over here and I engage quick punch. Now, why do I use quick punch? I like to use quick punch because quick punch allows you to do exactly that. It allows you to punch in and out for vocals. So say for instance, we like half of the performance of the singer or rapper and they say, hey, I just want to fix that one part on the end. Beautiful thing about quick punch mode is it'll allow you to do so. So watch this. As soon as I press this, it's in quick punch mode. It'll literally just punch in from where I choose it to do and leave the audio behind it alone so that we have a concise vocal that makes sense. Look at this closely. Here we go. LG made a banger. Awesome, we just punched in a vocal. Now I know what you're thinking. How in the heck would an artist know exactly when I press the button to just start rapping? Well, I'm gonna show you another way uh, or a way to do something I like to call or what is called pre-roll. And what pre-roll does is it's way easier just to explain it to you. So let's say, hey, I want a one bar of pre-roll before that comes in. So when the artist says, yo, give me a little bit of time before uh, the punch is comes in so I can hear, hear it properly or catch the beat, this is what this is. So what you do is you go right over to this top right here and you click pre-roll, okay? Pre-roll, and you choose how many bars you want the pre-roll to be. So for me, I said, I want it to be one bar. So I clicked it, typed in one, here we go. So say for instance, he wants to do that punch we did just now over, this is what I do. So now watch this. I have a record, play. LG made a 
So you saw a bar before the actual spot that I wanted it to record on, it played there so that the artist has a little bit of time to go, okay, I know I'm at and catches it on time. So this is why I highly recommend quick punch mode uh, when it comes to doing um, recording and stuff like that. It just has a lot more functionality and use for you when you do that. Uh, one thing I stay away from is destructive record. Uh, reason is because, uh, because anytime you use it, whatever it was, it records on top of, it deletes. I don't really like destructive record. I don't like destruction. So I always go with quick punch when it comes to that. And to be honest, you guys, that's a really basic understanding of how to record in Pro Tools, just simply to just get started and things of that nature. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I'll, I'll definitely add some more stuff. Tell me what you want to know uh, other than this below when it comes to Pro Tools. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, follow us at Help Me Devon on the Instagram. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can email me at helpmedevon at gmail.com. Remember, I have my own templates that are personally created by myself and two of my other guys, L. Jean and Courtney Taylor, that you could download at helpmedevon.info. The link is in the description below. And uh, until next time, you guys.